We've told you before about Lake Superior and its long history of wicked storms, shipwrecks, and anomalous sightings. We'll add this to the list, a close encounter between a Great Lakes freighter and a UFO. June 2019, Eric Rintamaki is in search of a unique rock called Uperlites that he discovered. It can only be found using a specific black light. I'm probably one of the most famous rock hounds in the world. Suddenly, very different glowing lights in the air over the lake catch his eye. Let's push in. It looks like two objects are flying perfectly in line with each other, or they could be two lights on a large object we can't see. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. The lights make no noise, and watch this. One passes directly over a ship. It's a thousand foot iron ore freighter to give you some reference on the size with that video. When Eric checks in with the freighter, they report that they didn't see or hear anything out of the ordinary. Eric watches the orbs for almost two hours, and then they seem to start watching him. Yeah, it's moving towards us, like real fast moving towards us. Author Alexis Brooks has heard of UFOs trying to make a connection with humans. This we see uh, quite often in uh, UFO footage where the light will become more illuminated, almost as if there's a communication going on between this object and the individual that's watching it. So this to me is extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. In a prior episode, we discussed the sighting of an alleged ghost ship on Lake Superior. That turned out to be a mirage of a nearby island. Is there some other optical illusion at play here? Let's check in with our ACE video analyst. Regular viewers will know Michael Primo as our video forensic analyst. I did not detect any evidence to support that this was added into the video recording, that this information was created by computer uh, imagery. So the video is real, but Primo says the camera's image quality is poor. We have a camera that's essentially not recording as accurately as we would expect when you point it into the sky and, and try to capture this information. Next, astronomer and video effects designer Mark D'Antonio examines whether the orbs could be something man-made. One keeps fading in and out. We're not seeing any blinking lights that are mandated by the FAA, so we know that they're not aircraft. It's not impossible that they might be drones. However, one thing to know about drones is they actually have their own set of lights, and an orange light is not typically one of them. And note that Eric tracked these orbs far longer than any consumer-grade drone can fly. Aviation analyst Tim McMillan wonders if it might be the most obvious culprit of all. The planet Venus is very commonly mistaken for UFOs because it, at certain times of the year, it can be extremely bright. However, this object is giving off kind of a orangish glow, and frankly, it appears to be much larger than even Venus at its largest points would look. D'Antonio thinks the object's orange glow is the key evidence. To me, this object matches a sky lantern profile. It'll get it'll dimmer and brighter, dimmer and brighter, and it'll start to flicker and finally go out. But what could cause the objects to seem to approach and then retreat from the beach? Cell phone camera footage is really hard, especially at night where you have a black sky and a singular point-like object. And what will happen is the camera will try to focus on it. It's called focus hunting or focus seeking. And it will go big, and get bloated, and then shrink down again as it tries to focus. And somebody could mistake that for an object racing toward them and then racing away. But just because the camera can't hold focus on the orbs doesn't explain what they are. And Eric and his clients saw them for over two hours, far longer than sky lanterns can stay aloft. It is categorically a UFO in that it's unidentified. This was not a hoax. And while it might not be an alien craft, it remains a genuine unidentified object. What's for certain is that Eric Rentamaki is still out there hunting Uper-like rocks and now UFOs. Happy hunting, brother.